It's a great honor, privilege, and this is the first time for me in this uh, town. And I've been in Sweden for seven, eight times, and uh, I have many interactions with many colleagues around the country. And it's very honored to be here, and I'm very inspired by the talk and the challenge we face in our society related to environment and energy and many things. And uh, based on my own research, I want to make some new proposals. And I'm also looking for not only scientific interaction, but also for industrial uh, communication as well as commercialization of some of the technology we are developing. Um, my talk focuses on an uh, invention we made a dozen years ago, and uh, as today we bring very many things even to market right now, I want to present you what we're looking for. One possible approach to help the environment as well as energy. As you look at this chart, this is dedicated uh, technology revolution we have experienced in the many past. In the first one, a steam engine was invented. The major power people use was coal. And later on, when the automobile aerospace engine came up, the majority was oil, liquid fuel. That's still the driving force today for many things. As we progress along microelectronics, as today people do nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, robotics, all this kind of internet of things, what are the energy we could be for us? What are the new energy we're looking for that can help us to solve the world global warming problem? So this, we try to explore the new opportunity. But if you look at all these revolutionaries, it all goes back to steam engine time. And people use heat to generate mechanical motions. And that was the first time using a machine to re replace labor. As a result, the train came up is because the fuel of coal, right? They, they drive to us. And most recently, you have other advanced engines as we use for aircraft and many other things. So this is the steam engine time. And the law was thermodynamics, the conservation of energy to convert heat to mechanical actions. As the world progress that uh, they generate electricity, use the mechanical actions, was Faraday's electromagnetic generator, and which was invented in 1831 for power generation. As progresses and up to 1900 have the AC current generator, which make a long distance transport of power possible. Okay, as a result, most recent one, we can build a very powerful power plant. And as you can see, this is a solve many problems we face in our society, but at the same time, due to power generations, emission from automobile industry, and many other things, we have new problem. But what we utilize this energy is such, <clears throat> is high quality energy. The energy we use coal, oil, those high quality energy, which are irreversible. Once you use it, that's the end of it. So therefore we use high quality energy, use power plant to generate electricity. So you generate electricity and distribute to very many different homes to see this, and you widely distribute it. But those power will not backflow, will not backflow to reach the power plant. You can have concentrated power as we used to be. So this is, if you look at called thermodynamics, this can be called the entropy in energy science. We goes to dispersed it, distributed power distribution. That's our how the power reach our each family through wires and cables. That's what we use, okay? But furthermore, when we do power generation, regard what energy you have, the most useful one is electric power. Still the most effective one is heat engine plus electric generator to get electricity. So these are the things we have been using and largely cause a lot of global warming as well, plus other industry for that. So the near future we face, we cannot depart from this. This is still the backbone of our power technology. But what challenges us today is people use too many small things now. The timing changes. The change is this because each of us have a cell phone, maybe other things. In the future, you're going to have a lot more. So power all this electronics 
is what the internet things required. And it's expanding more and more. Big data, where the big data come from? It's come from all these things. So therefore, we want to measure everything we, 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 we can measure. We want to know every location we need to know. All this is not a wired power. Use storage power or locally generated power. So it deviates from what we used to be. As you can see, this is a wider distributed power for that. In such a case that uh, called distributed energy, energy wider distributed in our society, but we can use solar energy, wind energy, thermal, mechanical energy to supplement all this need. And the uh, estimation shows that by 2025, there'll be 30 billion objects to be linked worldwide and powered to some extent with the detection right here. So what are the power delivery approach for us? Well, for example, sorry, those, uh, we can utilize the traditional power plant or we can use the storage units, distribute all the kind of things. But as a survey shows that if you rely on both storage and the major power, according to Cisco study, 90% of the internet of things will be impossible. And they show that if you use all this battery to power a lot of small things, the maintenance requires a lot of work. The internet thing will be impossible to be achieved. So what are the possibility? And they advocate the idea we pushed for more than 15 years ago called solar power system. Can we have the energy from the environment? to utilize the energy dispersed environment, we used to be considered low quality, random, useless, useless power for make small things. So this brings me back to uh, 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 some, more than 10 years ago when I published this paper. This was called Solve Power Nanotechnology. We can make nanotechnology small things. Can we make this solve power so it can operate independently, sustainably? Is this possible? If it's possible, how? If, if you know the possibility, can you make this efficient? So for the last 15 years, my research is looking for a new approach for solve, solve power nanotechnology. What we have to do differently? Let me show you a video. What you see here is such. Let me see. Okay. <clears throat> what you are familiar with electromagnetic generator. That's this thing is about. What we invented a few years ago was use trouble electricity for power generation. You see the difference. You can see this one in order to generate power, it has run at a fast pace, higher frequency. This one runs at low frequency. You can see the output at low frequency is much higher than the traditional technology. Why? If you can, this provides a means to collect low frequency energy dispersed in our environment. Okay, what do we mean by low frequency? If you look at the power output for individual ones, the trouble electric nano generator, short TNG, and electromagnetic generator, the electromagnetic generator is quadratic function of frequency. So at a low frequency, the output is low. But this is linear with frequency. So at a low frequency, such as two hertz or three hertz frequency, this is much more effective than the other one. So, but the energy which is wasted in, in our environment, mostly low frequency energy, not high. Can we get them, use them? So this is our goal, this is our approach. And let me tell you the scientific side, how do we do it? And then I'll tell you what's the technology application, which may help you. If you order to do this, low vo at a low frequency, high voltage output, you see many lights flash at such, how do you do this? This will go back to a phenomena all of us know. Each of us know thunderstorm, electrostatics, which is familiar to us. This, according to human record, this had been 2,600 years old. They know thunderstorm, they know have a uh, discharge. But this is a complicated problem, but it's accomplished to us any time with us. If you look at the textbook in the middle school physics book, you say, what is electricity? The first class, they talk about charge. So how do you get charge? Well, you get a glass tube and a fur, rubber one against the other, you get charge. That's all the textbook says. And did not tell you how, why, but you got it. Nobody suspected it was wrong. Nobody believed that, that's what you got, right? But 
we know trouble electricity. We know that happened. Very complicated. If you talk about quantum mechanical side, it's very complicated. Even today, physics does not have very clear explanation. How does trouble electricity occur? Is a quantum mechanical phenomena happens any time with us? Room temperature, even higher temperature. Okay. So my goal today is not to explain how does this happen. We have some answers. My goal is that how would you utilize this for this? Because today we have a lot of industry people here want to show the application side. So let's see how the electricity was generated. If you have two dielectric medium, one sliding against one, the other one, on the surface, trouble electricity occurs. If you're sliding them apart, you have the leakage field, which drives the electron to flow from one electrode to the other one to balance the field, which gives you a current flow here if you're sliding back and forth. So you can see this video we shot a few years ago. As you see, <clears throat> this piece sliding against the other one, it does not give you very high power, but very sufficient for many things. So what's the difference between this power compared to the power we use right now? Okay, there's a difference in the physics. What we have to utilize is a metal rod cut through the magnetic field. Lorentz force drive the current flow, which is the, is the generator we use today called conduction current. But what I introduce today goes to those four famous equations. Maxwell's equations, 1861. We, people use this one for communication. Wireless communication, antenna design, do not use them for power generation. What we refer to is this term was introduced by Maxwell is called displacement current. This displacement current is not the electric current of moving charge, not this but a time variation of electric field. So this is the one, if you have the surface charge on the top and the bottom surfaces, if you tap it on this one, change the distance between the two, you change the electric field here, you get the power generated, the current flows. Even sometimes there's no wire, but there's a power transmitted, okay? So this is a displacement current called capacitive current. That's what we use. If you look at, furthermore, if you two dielectric, one contact the other one, the trouble electricity occurs, then you separate them apart, and then this change of variation of electric field, which give you displacement current inside and conduction current outside, and that's what you see. You see those light flash as you made an inch of this one because of this. So it's different, fundamentally different. It's different from physics, from what we try to use, we used to use. But of course, you can derive the equations, how the current flow, but I will simplify this term. Let's say, for you, okay, you have two dielectric mediums, contact because of surface charge, and you can work on the field distribution here, here, and here, use all the, this equation here. What the important things here, it is the current standard term is this term. And two years ago, I add this term is because of polarization due to surface charge, which gave you ours, the current we observed. So instead of spending a lot of time explaining what this current is about, all the math means, but I want to focus on applications. What you can utilize this? This can be utilized to harvest the low quality, disperse the energy for internet of things, for power, very many small electronics. So if we, based on such a principle, then we put in it in a tubular shape, you see? In the shoes insole here, this about a two to three millimeter size is a tubular shape inside of the structure like this. So if you if the foot press this one, cause the contact separation between the top and the bottom here, as a result, you'll be able to generate a small power of that. You see, this you don't have to work hard, and this does not add any weight, but just add uh, a little bit thickness in your shoes, and then then you walk. You can generate a small power for here. You can imagine that used to be you can you need half the energy from a walking. It's not that easy. It's not easy. You have a gear. You have a mechanical transduction system. In ours, is mostly organic materials with metal foils. You can do these purposes. And uh, so this is the insurance. And what are the choice materials? You can literally choose any materials. You can choose paper, you can choose fabric, you can choose a silicon. And this is what it is. You can use a silicon here. This twist the three round here, flexible, foldable, and you'll be able to have a power generation by this. So this can be shape adaptive. You can adapt to any shape of the surfaces for healthcare, 
human uh, for the uh, uh, robotics, artificial intelligence, anything, you tap a different part of one, current signal is generated here. So shape adaptable, use organic or soft materials for these purposes. You can also use this shape healable. You, you can use different polar function polar. You make this one, you use the knife to cut it, and after some temperatures, they, they recover themselves. And before and after, the performance almost no change. So therefore, you can use this material, make a shape adaptable, healable, soft uh, material made power generator, which used to be can make a solar, solar cell, uh, organic LED, but this use organic material for mechanical energy harvest. <clears throat> then you say, how much energy we can harvest? Well, we can make it one and a half feet, one and a half feet board. You put it on the surface here. A person freely walking generates about 2,000, 3,000 volts. This all lights flashes because the person walk, free walking here. And it's not very much power, but enough for some purposes. For some pur especially wide distributed units for Internet of Things, for sensor network. That's the power they need. So let me give you some example for applications, okay? First one is medical application. Power pacemaker is a big uh, uh, challenge for many things because the battery has to be changed once uh, every three, uh, three to five years or so, okay? So we, first one, we try to use uh, the breathing of the animal to power a simulated pacemaker, simulated pacemaker. We might want to use the breathing of an animal to drive this pacemaker for future use for human. So implant medical device need a small power source. Now we made a lot more progress recently, as we say, larger animals, large animals. We use the breathing of large animals, bring once, can power this pacemaker three times. So we are moving forward. So that used the implant medical devices, use the energy each of our body has. Look at the future. The future is this. Now the, the pacemaker is, is in this shape. In the future, it's self-powered. Because the power consumption of the pacemaker drops, but the power harvesting efficiency of our device goes up. So there's a crossover above which we can do that. So this is called self-powered device by that, right? What other material you can utilize? Do we need expensive, sophisticated equipment to make this one? The answer is no. You can use literally paper fabric. This is used the fab fibers. If you have two fibers, because the contact of two different fibers, one against the other one, can cause trouble electricity between the two, and you can generate a power source here. So you can see this looks like a carpet here, but it's made of power shirt, power carpet here. So you can put on the floor here, somebody stepping that, there's power generated like that. They use the trouble electricity between the fibers, between the fibers here, okay? Fabric, fabric. And you can make this into address, uh, addressable, pixel addressable here. You tap in different positions, you get the, the signal out here for make a sensors use the conventional materials. You can choose the material for different purpose. You can use this uh, winding materials. For example, the tubular materials, you can wind a different structure here, make a core shell here, and you can make this ribbon shape here for biological sensing for body motion. And this can be stitched on a different part of the surface. When you move, when you, when you move any part of your body, there's a signal being generated. This is used to be for future robotics, healthcare, and security, very many different things. So you can see this kind of structure like that. All we rely on a trouble electricity, trouble electricity. So when you, if somebody play a golf, and a different shape when they do it, at a different stage, you can detect the signal at a different stage here. You can record that. And also, people can correction people's move when they are training, to be trained, play golf or other spots here. So this use the trouble electricity as a sensing mechanism to tell in any move you follow the right pattern or not. This used the one. We can make this highly textured. You see, use the contact between two fiber here, you can addressable. If you touch different parts, the signal being generated at different parts here. So pixel addressable, this kind of sensing here. And we are developing this one. I hope to reach millimeter or even smaller pixel resolution so we can use it for other purposes as well. 
So we are not only looking for just one materials. We're looking for the system. The system is this because we have random energy, the energy which we normally do not use. So variable frequency, variable amplitude. But we need a system which have all the components we need to be function. So therefore, we need to design the materials, we design the structures, fabrication, all the measurements. For our nano generator part, we have three major components. The components, the energy harvesting part. Because our environment is variable, slower, faster, sometimes you have, sometimes. But use the power management system and the storage. Then once you store it, you can utilize it for whatever purpose you need to. So we look at for a system, not only just one material. It's a system that's included power generator, power management, as energy storage. And as of all this one, we can have a integrated component. If you have a commercial product, if you have some existing electronics, we can work with you to make your device to be hopefully cell powered. Okay, so we can have, a, this example shows a car key here. We can use this, charge this one, and a transmit signal about 30 yard away. You can see this was just shot a few years ago, and I was to make it simple. This is the power management board, because different uh, from the traditional power management here. And there's a car located right here. There's a car located right here, and this can press here, the signal transmitter here, you can see the light flashes. We try to demonstrate a self-powered system here. We have very many different examples. Due to time limitation, I'll just give you a few, okay? And then you say, well, <clears throat> this sounds good, but total power you have is low. As I begin to say that, today, we're looking for distributed small power source. The power of each is small, but the number is huge. So that's the energy for the new era we are facing. That's the Internet of Things, Sense Networks. Then for the future, how possibly can you contribute to the large scope of energy we all need? Let me propose a bigger idea for you. Well, <clears throat> nature offers a lot of power, but we are unable to utilize that. We can only use high quality power, high quality. If you have this power, this low quality, you cannot use that. In order to do that, people design all kinds of infrastructures for housing that, but the efficiency and the cost is tremendously, tremendous. Efficiency is low, cost is high, and operation environment is very difficult to do that. To do that. So how do you do that? So let me do the comparison. What's the disadvantage of class technology, they cannot do this. What prepared them to do it? Let me show you, okay? Here it is. We make a magnetic generator, a tropical generator, same volume, different weight, because different mass. So we do the measurements as a function of frequency. <clears throat> Measure the open circuit voltage, show the circuit current, both for the electromagnetic generator, linear scale with frequency. But for the tropical generator, the current linear silica with frequency, the voltage is constant, different. You see, this is different here. That's making a difference for the two when you come to the conjunction here. So that means what? For low frequency, this is much more efficient than this one, this one. And how low? Well, a couple hertz. That's what you have in our environment. So we made a device such. You can see this device. We made a disc-shaped trouble generator. At the very beginning, I showed the video. And this is electromagnetic generator. So rotate on one axis, let's see the output. We use this, the output of this, to lit up these three lights. Use the output of this one to lit up these three lights. Let's see which one comes up together first. So when this is rotating, you're gonna see that these three lights, as soon as rotating 80 rounds per minute, these three lights flashes because driven by this. But the other three lights driven by this one remains unlit because the output low voltage is so low. So low. So you have to wait until the rotation speed picks up. Picks up by when? By roughly 350 rounds per minute, 6 hertz. Then this light will start flashing. Then when it's reached about 400 rounds per minute and it's as bright as the other one. So this, this difference is because at low frequency, these things have literally very little output. Only when the frequency is higher, it picks up. So, but at such a frequency range, we looking for. 
So all the low quality energy is unable to produce high frequency signals here. And in order to generate power, we have to do things like this, we have to do things like this, but we can't use this, and we cannot use that too. Because too slow. Too slow. So how can we use such power? Is everywhere, is anywhere. Like, well, let's make a sphere. So we make a sphere generated here, put in the water. And if the water flows here, inside is the core, rotate back the force, rotate back the force. And uh, then you can first one, see how it works, okay? The reason you see, you put this one in the water, just wobbling of the water, be able to give you. What's the principle? The principle is as simple as this one. We design an uh, asymmetric lateral here. When the ball rotates back, and the force. When the ball hit this side, trouble electricity occurs. The induction on this side occurs too. So this is negative charge induction. This will be positive induction here. In such case, when the ball roll back in the force, the charge flow from one lateral to the other one. Back in the force has rolled. So in the low frequency here, you hear. The advantage of this one is higher voltage output. Even this one can give you hundreds of volts. That means it can be use, useful power. Right, useful power. So in such a case, can we do this? In, and can we be able to utilize the things we never used before? Can we put this in a tank? And can we build a network like this for that? And I have some theoretical calculation shows that if you have a reasonable size, large this one, and it can produce the power just for the world. Theoretical calculation shows that for the size of like a state of Georgia, I live in Georgia, and uh, which have nine million people, that yeah. And then these things, uh, for such a size and a 10 meter depth of water, if you make a 3D integrate, the power output is for the world. If you could do that, well, so this is the dream. So the difference here is quadratic and linear. For low frequency, this beats the other one. So this is a long-term goal, and we are making progress in this one. Can we, for example, can we build such a spheres? Does it work? Well, we build such a things, and it works. It works. And can we make networks here? Can we make it in, in, in the ocean like this one? So we look for the large scope energy need. Let me do quickly. This can also be sensors. I show you the small power, the big power. It can also be sensor. For example, if you motion sensor, any kind of tricking become electric signal is a sensor. And you can trick different parts and different region here. You have many things here. And this can be utilized here. And Professor uh, uh, Ren Yunzhang did uh, quite a bit of work in this one. And we can make a, a keyboard. When you're typing, we can record where you're typing. The small signal you generate identify your typing patterns. We can put this on a keyboard on a here, so you can detect here. So recently, we tried to do that. For example, we make a keyboard that can record the things you're typing, analyze the features you're typing. Then if you type another place, we can identify the accuracy, identify who is typing. Is 98.7%. This is the another one similar like a voice recognition. People do voice recognition uh, 1982. Okay, we talk about uh, almost 40 years ago, 35 years ago. But today it's getting very popular. This is the typing pattern recognition because they can utilize this one for, for, for different purposes to use a keyboard. So we are developing this one in tangent keyboard. Also for, for uh, tricking and sensing, for medical purposes, for example, this is the tricking. Use the eye motion here, you can trick the switches, can lights on and off lights on. This is the sensor right here because the sensitivity is about a thousand times higher than in market here, right? So you can see this little turn light flash on. Medical purposes and infrastructure, you can measure the frequency of the bridge, use the vibration bridge to power it, then for, can, for the safety of the infrastructure of here. For medical, we can make a device here. We can measure the the, the, the detailed shape of the heart beating from which we can derive a lot of information about the health conditions as well as blood pressure. Robotics, you can fabricate robotics and the robotic hands is multifunctional, knows the, 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 the strength to be put in for hold a cup of water versus comp compare hold a hard ball, for example, different ones use different holding patterns here. So we want to make this one. And also you can make this one for paper-based ones. This uses 
two piece layer paste, uh, paper made ones here. We can make a double layer, about 10 micron apart. Sonic wave triggered, give you a, a electric signal, which can generate that. Utilize this one with the hearing aid. So we can build a hearing aid, use the trouble electric generator here, and they use different frequency, different size, you tune the frequency as well. And you can tune the size of this one to cover the entire frequency range we are interested in. So for example, this is just a, a, a sensor. You can hear that. There's a little sensor here, and there's a, 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 a home security system. So three parts I'm talking about that. Mainly use the trouble electricity for small energy, but it could have a long term for large energy. But also, mostly, it's so power sensors here. It's different from the class technology. This is the conduction current. And this uses the displacement current, and there's a different mechanism, a different path. So therefore, this is a new new principle, must bring new application. It's not a replace one by the other one. This power, there's no way to replace classical technology, but it can be supplements, because the, we look at the future, is that you be able to, beside the communication introduced by displacement current, which have many things we use today for antenna, like wave, uh, wireless communication, uh, in, uh, 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 lighting, etc. We be able to add a term that can introduce the principle of nano generator for energy, for small energies, for new things we are interested in, for new things in internet. Both can be supplement and can be utilized for the future things we are interested in. So those could be the entropy results. This energy dispersed in our environment used to be we are unable to utilize that. We talk about energy conservation. Why we have global warming? We burn everything. Of course we have the warming. No wonder. We burn oil, we burn everything. No wonder. So there's no, no argument is, is warming or not. There's no doubt. Well, how do we stop that? If we keep burning, right, we'll be, we, we'll, be, we'll be there. So how do we solve this problem? It's very complicated. I think we can look at some compli complementary ways to solve some of the problems to some extent. So I'd like to thank of my team for the hard working. And uh, uh, today, I just used the time to introduce what we can do with this one and hopefully can contribute a discussion topic for the future of energy sensors as well as the energy for the internet of things energy for sensor networks hopefully can bring some discussion for the future how can we solve the world global problem global warming problem over the long term thank you yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Wang. I have to, I have to admit that you almost lost me in the beginning with those difficult calculations. I'm not a scientist myself, but then I started realizing incredible implications of what you're showing here. Let's move over to the questions okay. that we had here. Of course, many of you use the uh, Menti, the code eight one one zero three one. You can also use that if you're following this on on online to post your questions to Professor Wang and to other, other persons later. Let me start with this one. What can we do to fully understand the mechanism of tribal electrification? Very good. We have recently did start this one at the atomic level. How, how does two materials, one physical contact, the other one charge transferred? So we do various measurements recently. And we have a couple of papers in, in the atomic level to describe how the tribal electricity occurs. Metal with with semiconductor, dielectric with dielectric. So we have several models. If this uh, uh, audience have the interest, send me an email. I will send you those recent publications. So this is a topic I'm studying right now. Hopefully we can get fully understood in a, in a few years. Thank you. I love that openness so much. And please uh, accept uh, and make good use of, of, of your generous offer. This one is so much in line with the whole conference because we want to bridge science and business. So how do you support entrepreneurs like someone in this room to use nanotechnology for new business applications? Yeah, Nanotechnology is very broad for medical, for information technology, for environment, very many different things. Normally people talk about nanotechnology means nanomaterials, but it's go way beyond nanomaterials. How do you can use a new structure here? So if you have new problem, existing industry problem, we can work with you for new materials to help you to improve the performance. Same time, we can make new structures to make your existing device be powered a different way or sensed a different way. So I think there's a lot of dialogue discussion be very helpful for the people, industry people to interface with us. We, we do some invention, sometimes we don't know where it's useful. 
And you may have the problem that you don't know the answers to solve your problem. So that's the opportunity we need to talk and discuss. Great. These questions are somehow interlinked and they're very linked to also what I think is a big challenge for the future, better energy storage. How can you store power from another generation and how uh, do you measure how efficiently the tank can be stored? Oh, thank you. And this, this we already done this part, but this part started. You know, this power storage is different from the traditional power storage. Traditional power storage is a DC input, you continue to charge. Here is a pulse. So it's a new, new problem in the storage. We are attacking that problem right now. So we still use the uh, super capacitors, capacitors for fast storage. And if you have a battery, we can charge that too. So still the classical traditional storage units, but for new mode of storage because the energy come as pulses. So this is the storage and this is how much is the power you can get out of this technology. You say it's small, but can it become big as well? <clears throat> efficiency. People talk efficiency. We measure that for the low frequency. We can re sometimes achieve about 50% conversion efficiency for energy uh, conversion. For the storage, like power management, we can achieve another 70%. It means 50 multiplied 70, so 30, totally 35% can be stored to the, to the device. I love this question the most. Is it possible to make highways of your technology and allow vehicles to generate <coughs> power? Now, this is linked to, there's a disco in Rotterdam in, in the Netherlands, where part of the disco is actually uh, powered by the, by the feet of people dancing, which is a great thing because then you want energetic uh, music and not, you know, the, the slow music. So it's, it's the kind of music I like the most that generates the most power. So how about vehicles and generating powers from that? Yeah, yeah you cannot power the vehicle. Vehicles very need a lot of power. But the power you generate can be supplement for lighting, for sensors, as well as the, uh, the safety of the automobile. We, I work with a few groups on work on these uh, automations. They work on automation, can monitor the tower, the tire conditions, monitoring the vibration of the cars. Those information feed back the car. The computer system in the car can help to improve the stability and the control of the car. So in that case, it's not to power the car, but make the car much more safer. This, I'm not sure whether this question was directly linked to oh. the pacemaker, but I certainly thought about the pacemaker. Do tanks have a lifespan limit or a workload based uh, wear out? Yeah, that's right. It's always people ask me the durability problem because the material we use like is not, is not as durable as we expect to. So we are working on that right now and we have different modes. Materials issue, we have also design uh, approach to solve that lifetime. And I think this one, hopefully in two or three years, we have some good uh, technology to introduce, to ex expand the lifetime of the device. Professor Wang, I believe you're generous enough to be with us most of the day, is that right? Yeah, I'll be here part of more of the time here. Yes. Great, because yeah. I see that some of these questions are something that People I know People are more than welcome to, to send me emails for the, for the questions and I'm more than happy to answer for them. Thank you so much for your presentation and thank you even more for your gener generous contribution and your openness to continue to interact with us. These are two small tokens of our appreciation. This is a chocolate actually made by students here at the Mitte Universität as a research project. Uh, so here's Swedish chocolate. I'm, I'm not you. sure you knew that existed. I was looking for Daniel Jenner inside. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And here we planted, just to make oh. sure that we do a small bit of uh, reducing emissions and improving livelihoods. These are trees planted in Eastern Africa, there's already 12 million before you helped contribute to even more trees there in okay. Eastern Africa. Thanks very much. Professor Wang, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.